Uh, the next speaker that we're going to be having is one of our occupational therapists at Washington University. Her name is Jamie Archer, and uh, she is really a Parkinson's specialist. And uh, she's going to talk to you about various occupational therapy things. She's absolutely wonderful. She does home assessments with our patients uh, and is well regarded and loved by all of the people she sees in St. Louis. Give her a round of applause. Let's hug Thank it you. Oh. I love her hugs. <laughs> it automatically makes you feel good, right? All right. Um, so as Johanna said, so I am very, very fortunate in my practice as an occupational therapist. Um, our clinic is extremely unique, and we're the only outpatient clinic in St. Louis, um, and actually that I'm aware of even in the area at all, um, that offers outpatient therapy services in the home, which is great. So Stacy had mentioned kind of home health therapy earlier in her presentation, and there are certain qualifications for that. So with what I do, we're able to capture um, another avenue of people who wouldn't necessarily qualify for home health. So I am able to bring the clinic to my patients, which is great. Um, and so I am here today to talk with you about home modifications, which is so important in that I'm able to get two people in their homes because it's really hard to talk about home modifications and how they can really help you in a clinic, right? I need to be in your home and seeing how things are set up, how you're living, how you're accessing the things around you and where the breakdown is happening. Um, so today we're gonna talk about home modifications and adaptive aids. I have no disclosures, nobody's paying me to be here. Um, one of the things that I do wanna mention, even though I'll talk about some branded equipment, I don't receive any compensation from any of these companies. Um, I purely am speaking with you today based on my experience and the experience of my clients in terms of what works well. All right, so just a brief agenda, the things that I want to touch on today. Um, so there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of home modification options for you. Um, so today is not meant to be all-inclusive. I am certainly not going to cover everything that's available out on the market, um, but I hope to at least give you a brief introduction of kind of a lot of different things that might be helpful for you or your loved one. Um, and then I also want to touch on kind of what resources are available in terms of accessing this equipment. So it's certainly great to know what's available, but the next step is where do I get it and how do I find this and get it to my home, right? Um, so I want to kind of give you some idea of where you can access these things. And then last but not least, um, knowing when a referral to occupational therapy can be helpful to you in identifying these things. So if this topic seems a little overwhelming or you're really not sure, you know something might be helpful, but what is it and what do we need? Um, occupational therapists and some physical therapists specialize in this and personally it's what I do every day so I am here to to be your friend and your advocate and help you find those right things to make life a little easier all right so what are home modifications um, altering the home environment to improve independence and to ensure safety is a big piece of this um, I'm going to stick on this slide and this bullet point for just a minute. So you can see that I've highlighted here altering the home environment. So changing things, right? Um, I think that it's really important to talk about this because home um, is a really personal, special place to all of us. And while home modifications sound like a great concept and these things may really make life easier, it's change that's a big part of that so you have to be ready to make the change um, and I want everybody to keep an open mind today when I'm showing you different pictures of equipment because there are so many options available um, a lot of things look medical to people and that's not comfortable at home um, but generally we can achieve the same functional goal uh, with something that's a little less medical looking um, so today we're going to talk about Altering the home environment, and we can do that in a couple of ways. Um, we can add things, we can remove things that are problematic, 
um, rearranging things to give you more space to move. Um, but for the purposes of my talk today, I'm going to focus on adding equipment because removing things or rearranging, that's very personalized to what your home environment is like um, and the things that may be causing trouble for you. And then home equipment ranges from very simple, affordable changes um, to really large home renovations. So we're going to be talking about things like um, weighted utensils. So those are really kind of simple and inexpensive, right? Or maybe a grab bar in the bathroom. But this also ranges all the way to things like uh, an entire bathroom renovation. So changing a tub shower to a walk-in shower. Um, so you can see that there's a, a wide range of cost here. Um, and this includes lots of different types of equipment. So adaptive equipment is that simpler, smaller equipment, and then durable medical equipment, which is more things like shower chairs and commodes and that kind of thing. So why is all of this so important? So by modifying the home, we hope to achieve um, several goals. So first and foremost, improving safety, right? We want people to be safe at home as that's where you spend most of your time. Um, for those who are having falls at home, reducing falls and identifying what the barriers are, that way we can make the appropriate changes. Improving or maintaining functional independence. Um, so for somebody who maybe requires just a little bit of help from a caregiver, um, the goal with adding equipment might be for that person to not require just a little bit of help, but maybe with the right equipment, they can get up on their own. That would be huge, right? Um, and supporting the caregiver too. So on the opposite end of that, maybe it's somebody who needs quite a bit of help to get up um, and they're putting that force on their caregiver and that can take a lot of burden over time, right? Physical, mental burden. Um, again, so with the right equipment, maybe it's that they can't be independent, but maybe they can put more of that force on equipment versus their caregiver and you can, the caregiver can take care of that person for a longer time and keep everybody in the house safer. Um, this idea of aging in place, have you guys heard of this term? Yeah, so it's kind of been kind of a big buzz term um, in the last several years especially, and there's a lot of research and studies on this. Um, but basically the idea is keeping people in their home, um, and really it's forever, right, to age in your home and not have to transition to another level of care. But I did put on here for as long as possible. Um, Parkinson's is a progressive condition and things change over time. Um, so really the goal is keeping you at home for as long as possible, but sometimes with chronic diseases that can be really challenging. Um, but that definitely is certainly one of our goals in occupational therapy. Um, and then last but not least, also just making everyday life a little bit easier for the person with Parkinson's and the caregiver. All right, um, so kind of the keys to identifying the right equipment. So we really have to kind of think back to the core concepts of what's causing the impairment and function at home. Um, so not only what symptoms are you having trouble with, but how is it impacting your day-to-day -day routine? So when we're thinking about equipment, it's not that every piece of equipment is right for everyone. Not everyone needs a shower chair or a grab bar. Um, but where is the breakdown happening? So is it with balance, is it with rigidity? Um, so any of these symptoms, so we're thinking about all of these things and we're looking for the right piece of equipment. All right, so we're gonna dive right in. And I've got a lot of pictures here. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is bathroom safety. Um, so this is one of the, the number one things that I get referrals for is safety in the bathroom. And I think it's just because it's where we spend uh, we take a lot of trips there throughout the day, right? Um, and also, um, in the bathroom, the thing to think of, there's just a lot of functions that we need to be able to do. There's a lot of reaching, a lot of twisting, um, backward steps. All of those things can become more problematic with Parkinson's disease. Um, so first, we'll just talk about shower. So mostly people have difficulty with balance in the shower, and that's why we need to modify the bathroom. Um, so one of the most common things that we recommend is grab bars. So you can see pictured here, I just have a typical stainless steel grab bar. This is probably the most common one. Um, my little caveat here though is grab bars come in 
all shapes and sizes. So if grab bar seems like, oh, I don't know if I really want that in my bathroom, um, pretty much any color scheme you can get, they come in lots of different colors, sizes again. Um, you can see in the bottom right corner for you guys here, there is a, this is a fairly new one out on the market, but it's a grab bar with like a shower caddy built in, which is great. It doesn't even look like a grab bar really, um, but it does certainly serve the same purpose. Um, and in the middle of the screen here, you can see a different type of grab bar. Uh, this is actually a tub side grab bar for those with a, like a standard tub shower, and this is more temporary. So it actually just has a plastic screw locking mechanism that you can tighten it down over the tub side. Um, so these are just a few different options for grab bars, but there are certainly an endless number of options um, just for that alone. So also in the um, shower, um, I have a couple of pictures here. The first one is of a tub bench, and on the other side is a shower chair. Um, so again, both of these achieving the same goal if somebody's having difficulty with balance in the shower. Um, so the shower is a wet, slippery place, right? So it's a pretty common place for falls. So grab bars is definitely one of the first things we think about. And the second is maybe if it's not safe to stand in the shower, maybe we need to think about sitting. Um, so this first option, a tub bench, is a longer bench, and essentially two legs of that bench sit outside the tub, and two legs sit inside of the tub. So the goal here is that if you were to walk up to this tub, you could sit, and in sitting, you could slide your legs over the tub and then scoot all the way into the tub without ever having to stand. So for people where that one leg stance to step over becomes a little bit more difficult, this tub bench can eliminate that for people. Um, and then the other option is a shower chair, which can also work inside the tub if we get the right size. Um, but basically it's just a seat in the shower. So these come in lots of variations as well. Um, the one that I've starred here, this is one of my favorites. It comes in lots of brands. But basically, um, again, for people with Parkinson's, we think about fatigue, we think about rigidity, again, that decreased balance. Um, so while you'll see some shower stools that are just a standard stool, I, I have found that those are a little less rigid just because they have less parts and they're really not that stable, which kind of is not the best thing when we want somebody to be safe. So armrest, backrest are really, really good for people with Parkinson's especially, that way they have somewhere to grip to be able to push to stand back up. All right, and then the other thing that we're thinking about in the shower is the floor surface, right? So many um, tubs and showers have kind of a standard texturized surface in the bottom of them, and that's perfect, but not all come that way. Um, so the shower surface is definitely something we're thinking about with safety in the bathroom. So oftentimes we recommend these, just these simple treads that are pictured in the middle of your screen here. Um, they come in lots of colors again, but basically it just gives you a little bit of resistance to keep your feet from sliding when you're on that slick shower surface. Um, shower mats are another option. I tend to veer away from this um, unless somebody's really leaning toward it because if we're looking at something inside the shower because you're having difficulty with balance, it's probably not the best idea after you're done showering to reach to pick that shower mat up to let it dry, right? Otherwise they get mildewy and nasty underneath. Um, so unless you have a caregiver helping you, this is probably not the best option. We tend to veer toward this, the treads instead. And then we also want to think about some kind of slip resistant matting outside the shower because when your feet are wet and you're stepping out, the last thing you want to do is step onto a wet or a tile floor with wet feet, right? Um, so the most important thing to think about outside the tub is something that has that slip resistant backing that's not going to move with you as you step out. All right, so next we're going to talk about the toilet. Um, so the toilet is also a really common thing that I um, am asked to provide recommendations for um, because with Parkinson's, sit to stand, that movement of getting you know, upright from a sitting position becomes really difficult for 
a lot of people. Um, so kind of working on my screen from your left to right is kind of the least restrictive equipment to equipment that is a little bit more extensive. Um, so again, simple grab bar here um, on the far left. So that's an easy solution for just giving somebody some place to hold to be able to pull themselves up from. Toilet safety rails is another option. Um, so basically this is a mechanism that's just a frame and it fits directly underneath your standard toilet seat, um, but just gives you armrests basically. So just like an armrest on a chair. Um, and it bolts in the back of the toilet um, where, this, where the seat bolts down. So the seat just comes up, we put the frame down, bolt it back in, and they're very stable. Um, and then a lot of times on these, the handles are adjustable depending on how tall you are as well. Um, if that's not enough, if the toilet maybe is a little bit too low and we need to increase the height of the toilet to make it easier for you to stand, a toilet riser would be the next option and we can achieve this in two different ways. So either at the bottom of the toilet, um, and this is called a Toilevator, I think is the brand name, but basically it's just a base that increases the height of your standard toilet. And then above that, another way that we can um, elevate it is at the top. So with a toilet riser, and this one also has the safety rails. And then again, your toilet seat just unbolts. We put the toilet riser down, your standard toilet seat, and then it's just longer bolts to keep it in place, basically. And then last but not least is a bedside commode. So a lot of people don't think about this in the bathroom, right? Bedside commodes, generally we use either at the bedside or somewhere else in the house if people have difficulty getting to the bathroom quickly enough. But the other way that we can use them is just to remove that bucket and sit it right over the toilet itself because then we're achieving possibly an increased height to make it easier to get up, but also again giving you those handles to be able to push up from. All right, um, also in the bathroom, um, so this is probably looks kind of the most extreme in terms of equipment, but actually I will tell you that this super pole is what it's called, is one of the more um, temporary pieces of equipment, believe it or not, even though it looks big and scary. Um, so these are nice um, and can be used kind of throughout the home, but I'm showing it here in the bathroom because it can achieve multiple goals. So let's say somebody has difficulty getting up from the toilet, but they also need something to hold on to to get in and out of the shower. Depending on your bathroom setup, um, we could use this super pole in between, and essentially you could use it for both places. So it can achieve multiple goals, which is nice. So basically this is a floor to ceiling pole, and actually it's not bolted at all, believe it or not, it's spring loaded. So we always have contractors install this. Um, the key is getting it into a ceiling beam to make sure that it has adequate support. Um, but basically it can be really easily moved anywhere in the home as long as we get it in the right support spot. And then this, the horizontal bar in the middle with a quarter inch lift, that bar, it's called a handy bar, spins 360 degrees around that pole. So this is a nice option for people not only in the bathroom, but it's also very commonly used um, in the bedroom. And I'll show you a few pictures here in a minute of that. Um, but this is a really handy tool that's more of a temporary piece of equipment versus permanent because it doesn't have to be um, drilled into whole walls or anything like that, which is nice. Um, so. This slide um, is really focusing on hygiene. So Johanna mentioned that earlier in her presentation, particularly with people who have UTIs and things like this. So for Parkinson's disease, when reaching behind becomes difficult or maybe coordination or balance with those movements, um, these are kind of some options that can make hygiene a little bit simpler for both um, the patient as well as the caregiver. So long-handled sponges, loofahs, bath mitts for people who may have difficulty holding on to a washcloth. Um, we also think about what type of soap are you using? Is it bar soap versus a pump dispenser? Um, handheld shower heads are really nice, especially for people who are making the transition from standing to shower to sitting. 
This allows them to have the control over the water and still be able to get to the places they need to reach. Um, and they make lots of different pods for those. So if somebody's sitting in the shower, they don't want the water all the way up here where they can't reach it, right? So they make like these little holster things that you can put on the side of your shower to slide that handheld shower hose into. That way it's really accessible from a sitting position as well. Um, and then also on the far side of the screen here, um, we recommend sometimes either a washlet on your standard tool, stool um, or even a bidet style toilet for those who are having difficulty um, with hygiene after using the restroom. And then a flip side of that, a more affordable, is just the standard flushable wipes. A lot of people don't think about that, but when you're helping somebody with hygiene, um, a wet wipe or a washcloth is generally a little bit easier for cleaning versus toilet paper. Um, the one thing that I will say about washlets and bidets, while they're a really great option for improving hygiene, oftentimes hygiene becomes problematic for people who are starting to have cognitive impairment. And the caveat with that is most of these devices come with fancy remotes that have lots of options. So it doesn't necessarily, it's not generally good for somebody to be more independent with toiling, but easier for the caregiver. Because oftentimes they look at that remote and it's got so many buttons that they don't even know how to use it generally. Um, so that's one thing to think about with the washlet or the bidet. And one thing that I didn't mention um, about the bathroom also, one thing that we really think about as OTs is the bathroom is a shared space in a lot of homes, right? So it's not necessarily, um, uh, not everybody has a bathroom that just they use. So it's something we want to keep in mind for everybody using the bathroom that when we install equipment, it's not going to become cumbersome for the other users or house guests, things like that. Um, so it's just something we keep in mind. Um, so next I'm going to talk about equipment for just basic daily activities. So things like dressing, grooming, eating. All right, so with dressing, um, here are a couple different items that can be helpful for people who are maybe having difficulty with balance. Um, maybe they're a little bit less flexible, they're rigid, um, difficulty with hand coordination. So long-handled shoe horns, um, a lot of us are really familiar with that. It's a simple piece of equipment that can make getting a shoe on a little bit easier. Um, a button hook, so it's a fancy gadget, um, and basically what you do is you just slide it through the buttonhole, hook the button, and pull through, and it buttons your shirt for you, um, rather than having to kind of do the two-handed uh, movement of fastening a button. So for gentlemen, um, sometimes people like them for sleeve cuffs, it makes it a little bit easier, um, or for sometimes those top buttons that are a little bit trickier. Also are reachers, um, and reachers are one of those pieces of equipment um, that again come in lots of different kind of shapes, links. Um, so just because you've tried one and you didn't like it, um, there may be other options that are a little bit easier. So especially with the trigger handle, some it's literally a finger movement, some it's a full grasp. Um, so there might be different kinds that are easier to use for you or your loved one. Um, now with reachers, oftentimes you'll see them advertised as somebody reaching in a high shelf to get a, to get a can of soup down. Um, that's not the best advertisement because that's not really realistic. We don't really want you using them to reach over your head to get something heavy. Um, generally more useful for somebody who maybe isn't doing so well bending over to reach to the ground to pick something up that they've dropped. Um, or if I was getting dressed and my shoe was kind of out of reach, I could grab my shoe with the reacher to pull it a little bit closer to me. So more meant for kind of lighter weight objects, um, but they are a all around kind of handy tool for daily life, but can certainly help with dressing. Also is a dressing stick. So this is again another handy tool. Um, we often recommend it for dressing, but it can be used kind of throughout your day for various tasks. So on one end, it's kind of a backward S shape hook and then on the other is just a regular ring hook. Um, but basically you can see in these pictures it's used for lots of different things. So the woman at the top is using it to push off her jacket maybe because she has decreased shoulder movement. Um, the gentleman on the left 
um, pushing off his sock because he can't quite reach far enough down. And then the lady at the bottom using it to actually lift her pants to be able to slide her foot through. Um, so again, just another handy tool that can be used in lots of different ways. Um, when we think about grooming, there are a couple ways that we can adapt. Um, typical things that you use in the bathroom for grooming during the day. So electric or battery operated toothbrush is a really easy accommodation. Um, the nice thing about these is the built up handle. So for people it's a little bit easier to grasp and hold on to. Um, but also the movement piece for people again who may be having trouble with thoroughness, it does the work for you, right? So it's a little bit easier. Um, there are also different types of dental floss holders. Again, that built-up handle, making it a little bit easier for people who are, who are having trouble with that fine coordination. Um, and then also our electric razors for the gentlemen. So maybe this is for people who are starting to complain about cutting themselves with a bladed razor, um, or for people who are missing spots because it's hard to reach, an electric razor might be a good option. Um, and then here is a slide that is just a bunch of different equipment to help with eating. So most people have um, seen or heard of the weighted utensils or the built-up utensils. Um, liftware is another option. So again, that's pretty pricey, but some people have found it helpful, um, people who are struggling with tremor. I will mention um, APDA has a liftware utensil at their office location. Um, I also have one available, so if that's something you're interested in, you could trial it with e either place. Um, adaptions to basic cups, so thinking about handles, lids, straws, all of those things can make life a little bit easier. Um, down here in the middle is a plate guard. Um, so this is a really simple piece of equipment that's easily used on any plate, um, but basically it's just a ring, and then it's got these little clips on the bottom, and you just stretch it around your plate, but basically it just gives you that ability when you're scooping to have something to scoop against rather than scooping all around the plate and being kind of unsuccessful with it. And then we also think about placemats. So again, if you're having a little bit difficulty um, and you can't kind of keep your food still, that it's called Dysum is the brand name, but basically it's a slip resistant surface that keeps your plate from moving. So again, could be used kind of throughout multiple locations in the home, um, but in particular with eating. And I'm being told I only have five minutes, so I'm gonna start getting through these a little bit faster. Um, so stairs, we think about handrails. There are different types of grab bars. Um, in particular for outside the house, for people who maybe have one or two steps, there is a special kind of grab bar that's called a crooked grab bar. And basically it's at an angle, but it allows you to reach it from no matter which way you're going. So if you think about a standard grab bar, you would only be able to grab it from like the inside or the outside, right? So these crooked grab bars, it allows you to grab it from either, either way you're entering or exiting, which is really helpful. We also recommend ramps for people. There's lots of different styles. Um, Chair lifts are very common for people who are having difficulty navigating the steps. Um, I do want to show this. So this is that super pole again in the bedroom. Um, so a lot of people with Parkinson's begin to have trouble getting in and out of bed because of the stiffness, right? Um, so these super poles can be really helpful to achieve helping get from lying to sitting but then also from sitting to standing. Um, so you can see this gentleman doing both of those movements. And then very common also is the bed cane on the far side of your screen. Um, and that is a very simple piece of equipment again. It's basically just a piece of plywood that slips in between the box spring and the mattress. And then it's got this candy cane shaped cane on it um, that gives you a place to hold to be able to pull up out of bed. And then also our bed rails. Here's some equipment in the living room, so chair lifts, um, furniture risers, just to elevate your standard furniture. Um, some devices in the kitchen, so lots of different adaptive knives, jar openers, special cutting boards. 
Um, this is a really common thing that people ask for. It's called a handy bar. Um, so it's a, basically a portable grab bar for the car. So it fits into the door jam of the car and just allows you to be able to have something to push up from to get to sit, sitting to standing. And then also we recommend swivel seats. So again, that rigidity makes it hard sometimes um, to get in and out of the car especially if a caregiver is helping somebody. So that swivel seat can make it a little bit easier once you get somebody to sitting to be able to get their legs and slide them in the rest of the way. Um, and then medication organizers are another really common thing um, that we help people with because with Parkinson's disease, there are often a lot of medications um, to coordinate throughout the day. So medication organizers can help caregivers, especially with that process. And, um, not only making sure that you get the right medications, but they're on time. Um, so there are lots of different versions of these, but medication organizers with timers, um, morning, afternoon organizers, pocket organizers. Um, they have watches with timers, so lots of different options for that. And basically there are, again, equipment options almost for anybody with lots of different price ranges depending on what your budget is. Um, Medicare doesn't typically cover the cost of most of these things, um, but they will cover the cost of some durable medical equipment, and I've included that um, resource here. The VA for veterans typically will help assist with some equipment, and if you do feel like occupational therapy, you need help knowing what equipment um, would be right for you or your loved one, insurance does typically cover the cost of an OT assessment. Most of this stuff um, can be bought in at the medical supply stores here locally. Um, the nice thing about that is you have a resource, you can go and try it before you get it, and if it's not working, you have a place to return it. However, most of those stores, um, the equipment is a little bit pricier. So other options are just larger box stores, so places like Walmart, um, Walgreens, CVS, home supply stores like Lowe's and Home Depot have equipment. Um, and the internet. So if you're an internet shopper, Amazon often has great deals on medical equipment, believe it or not. The APDA does have some smaller equipment in their office, so that's just something to keep in mind if you want to check something out before you buy it. Um, and then for people who don't have the budget to afford medical equipment, there are some options in terms of local organizations um, or secondhand stores. So OT and PT can definitely help you identify what's right. Um, and then just real quickly, so again, Parkinson's is a progressive condition that changes over time. So equipment maybe that was recommended right at diagnosis or soon thereafter may be different um, five or ten years down the road. Um, so that's something important to keep in mind. And I think it's just as much to be able to help the caregiver it is, as it is the patient. So it's definitely for both. Thank you. Any questions quickly? I don't know if we have time. No, never mind. <laughs>